Hello everyone, here is Rie Takeda. I'm calligrapher and artist. I'm live streaming right now here in Madrid from this beautiful domestic studio. And I've been filming for a week for my new calligraphy course, which will be launched soon I believe in April or in early spring. So if you are interested, check out Domestica website. So today I'm really excited to show you the art of calligraphy, Japanese uh, art of shodo, Japanese calligraphy, and also the mindfulness aspect of shodo. And we are going to practice a kanji called tomo. That means friend, friends, friendship. Okay. And before we start the process, let me briefly introduce myself and what I do. I create various types of calligraphy work from a modern, uh, from classic to a modern, and sometimes very pop. I experiment with more abstract input as well. And I paint and create also colorful works. I call it painted poem series. It is fusing the traditional techniques like calligraphy, sumie, kirie, and a contemporary form with rich colors and patterns. I hope you can see my portfolio right now. So this is my artworks. And today, because I'm a trained calligrapher, I've been teaching shodo since more than 20 years in the UK, Europe, and in Japan. And I teach shodo with my original method, so mindfulness-based method, since 12, 13 years now. So, well, my heritage is Japanese and my grandmother who was a calligraphy master, she taught me how to shodo, how to calligraphy and showed me lots of diverse techniques and styles. And most importantly, I have to say, she showed me how to connect body and mind together, which is the essential part in Shodo practice. And I'm going to briefly give you some tips on that element. So let's move on. So I, I'm not sure whether all of you have calligraphy sets. If you got some basics, you can happily practice live with me. And if you haven't got any, you can just watch and maybe start later. And I believe this is live, but you can watch it later on YouTube and Facebook as well. So no stress, just sit back, you can watch as well. So 
fast. Let's start with utensils. So the first, the four treasures are ink, sumi ink. It's often so the block stick like that. And then ink stone here, you can see. And paper. I got very fine calligraphy paper and brush. So today I got soft haired brush and hard haired brush. So I think I'm going to use the soft haired brush. Okay. And I just tell you as an alternative, you can use for dry out water water based black color mixed with water so it's more like bluey and the brush maybe you can use softer longer brush for water colors maybe so that longer the better if you got one and the paper maybe you can have any drawing paper between 80 to 100 milligram thickness so it's not so thick that would be good so now so i'm going to show you how to calligraphy this kanji tomo okay so the paper is ready and first of all i want you to release the tension from the body and the mind first we do some exercises very short really like light exercises to get rid of the tension and stiffness so if you check your posture so sit really straight no no legs crossing just sit on the <laughs> you don't have to sit really comfortably so your bottom have full contact on your chair or if you're sitting on the floor just sit really comfortably and imagine that your back spine is really long and airy it's like a hanging from the sky so that's our middle line this is the center right and let's do the shoulder so pull your shoulders high as high as possible and stay there as long as possible and then slowly let it go breathe out maybe one more breathe in pull your shoulders to the limit and then slowly let it go so you already notice some lightness here i mean today i would have to shortcut all the details and the process okay so you can happily do more if you like to i just show you some and now i want you to check the neck area so really flexible maybe back and forth and uh, left and right and you can make a small circle clockwise and counterclockwise just a small if you got some pain just don't challenge too much okay just flexible so then all the joints i want you to just loosen up a little bit from fingers to the shoulder so you don't put any tension and pressure around the shoulder area relax okay and now let's activate our inner energy that's really important point. So I want you to check your fingertips and then 
rub it very gently. So only the fingertips. And you don't have to go really hard like this, only the feet. And then just rub it like a massage. Okay, and then I want you to check if you feel the warmth from your fingertips without the skin contact. Do you? So this is our inner energy chi, so our living resource. So in Shodo, we would like to bring this energy flow out of the body and then make it visible on the paper. I know it sounds very difficult, but that's what we are going to try, okay? And now, ideally, I want you to rub the ink. So you prepare the water in the ink stone, and this is the ink stick. And I call it arriving stage. So we are releasing the tension from our mind too. So really like switching off your thoughts and coming down. So I show you three fingertips. If you are left-handed, you can use your left hand and flip this set this way. So then hold the ink stick diagonally, so 45 degrees, no pressure, just rubbing back and forth, very gently, like massaging the surface of the ink stone. And please combine the breathing. So breathe up in, breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. So it normally takes eight to 12 minutes till the water gets darker and thicker. So today we have to shortcut this process. But when you practice at home, at home, please take this 10 to 15 minutes time just to meditate and enjoy the present moment. And that's really important process in Shodo. So and now always just check your posture that you are not tense in the upper body. So I just show you how to hold the brush. So each brush has like this middle area. Imagine this is like our back spine, it's hanging. And then again, three fingertips from the sky. Go down, so you're holding around this middle area, so you don't have to go too deep or too high, just right in the middle, it's ideal. So then let the brush absorb the ink. So always in the same direction as the hair, so you never go against the hair. Just like when you comb the hair, so always parallel. And then you can reduce the excess ink with the ink stick. Just take it very slow and gently. You don't have to get hectic in Shoto. Okay, so I shortcut the process, so my ink is, should be quite dark. Let me check. So that's really black, but if your tone is not as dark, 
for medium dark, it's it should be enough. As long as it's not too thick with you. Okay. So I just show you this. And then also I would show you the energy movement. So you can envisage how the inner energy flows on the paper. Okay. So check your posture. The middle line is around here. So first we go 45 degree angle and then side brushing. So check here, check the middle line, okay? So now comes the second stroke. Sorry, I haven't put the stroke numbers here. I just show you go in crossing the middle line and then slowly let it go and check as if here is the ground so this is our earth so ground stroke and i want you to check also the middle area lightly so the flow goes here and here and now we go a third stroke, 45 angle, go up, one, two, corner technique. And now keep the line sideways, sideways, pursued. And then at the end, let it go a little bit in. Okay, so. Now we are going to do the last stroke. That is brush out stroke. Check the middle line. So you come here. Go in with the angle. Land on the ground first. Three step movement. One, two. Open the brush. Now pull the energy from the back of the brush. At the same time, let the tip of the brush come down and then let it go. So sure that's the ground. Check the middle line. Now comes the energy movement. Come in and one more time, in and one, two, three. That's the flow. And here is the middle line. So now I will show you only each part. One two, three, and four, okay? Let me just get the new paper. And you can always fold twice, fold the paper twice, so in order to have the middle area and the middle line. In Shoto, the middle line is very important. So make sure this middle line and your stomach area always in the same position. So this is our autopilot middle line. Okay. So when you look at this character, the middle area is around here. And this kanji, as I said, means friend. Friends, friendship. It's so symbolizing two hands coming together. And also developed into the meaning that the two hands as two, two persons sharing sort of same value in the same path. 
but let's say in the past, sharing the same value on the past. So it sounds a bit abstract, but that's how this kanji is being developed. You don't have to remember that, but later when you compose the whole movement, maybe you could visualize some extra element as you practice. So I show you side brushing. The first technique is side brushing. It's one of the foundational strokes in Shoto. So you always start with 45. Without the pressure, this is clear contact. I just show you only the side brushing, only the stroke. Wait, and then let it go. 45, 45. I think my ink is a bit too thick, so let me loosen up a little bit. I got water. So you can adjust with a bit of water. So you can see it's a bit too dry. So in Shodo, always keep the brush upright and you never go flat or 90 degrees. You never do that. So always clear diagonal line. And then sideways, keep the contact always sideways. And what's important is to combine the breathing. So breathe in and out. No pressure, just wait till the ink comes down on this line and then let it go. So check the angle. Breathe in and out. So the line would become more individual and alive. Always breathe in and out and no pressure. So your body is open and light. So that's the side brushing. Well, we have to sh shorten the process. Do we have still? Yeah. Okay, good. So now I show you Another technique while I can. So this is slide out technique. So the you come in with 45 angle and then keep the side face. So the brush is open. And then slowly pull the energy up higher and then let the tip of the brush come down. And then that's where they meet, those two elements. And then that's the moment you go up. I'll just show you the details. So for this practice, we can just create a line as a ground, so as an earth, so like this, and just we do the part practice. So you come in 45, breathe in, and then keep the brush sideways, slowly let it go. So imagine that the line is holding a big air balloon here, and let the energy fade out so you don't stop immediately like this so always in a flow and go in and then slowly and preparing to land pull the energy from the back and then the tip comes down so you have two movements at the same time. Energy in and slowly, slowly 
pull the energy from that part and let the tip comes down. So always keep the brush upright as well. In without the pressure and slightly slowly open. Pull the energy up, up. The tip is here and let them meet and then let it go. So imagine you have a big balloon here. So that keeps in a lighter flow. That's the slide out technique. You see very often this one. And now I show you the corner technique, the kazuo here. So many kanjis has this corner technique, one of the major techniques in shoto. Let me change the paper. So, so the corner technique has a clear three-step movement. It looks so easy and it's done very quickly, but it has very deep complex movement. So let's create the ground again so you have better orientation. So I just show you only this part, stroke number three. 45 in. So step one, pause. Contact is there. And step two, create a diagonal line. Okay. Now take this contact, new contact with you sideways. No rush. Slowly pulling the energy from the back. The tip comes down and let it go. So this is the clear corner technique. So I show you here. One. One is only where you pause. Two is to create a diagonal line like so. So you have new contact here. And then three is the combination. Okay. So I show you two more or three. In 45, keep the brush upright. Clear stop pause. One, two. Then slowly take contact with you and preparing to land, pull and let the element go. So always this upper movement is important to stay in the flow. In, one, two, slowly, out. So only the hair part moves around this part and your wrist, elbow are always steady. So you don't have to twist like this or like this. Always this movement, like ice skating, light, light, no pressure from the above. That's really important in Shoto. And imagine that always the brush follows your energy rather than your body trying to conduct the brush. So it's the brush movement and your energy movement get synchronized and makes a lot
lights are closed. So now let me show you this. Do we have enough time? <laughs> okay, so let's do this brush out technique. So that was a corner technique combined with slide out. So, ah, for the paper, if you got the calligraphy paper, you can check with your fingertips. The smoother side is the surface you calligraphy on. The other side is slightly uh, a bit rougher, okay? So I show you only this technique. We need also another round line. So this one. So you come in and then 45. So first, let it land. So this technique also has a clear three step movement. One is pause here. Then second, open the hair a little bit without a twist, just lightly open up. So now immediately from the back, you are pulling your energy higher upwards. At the same time, you can see the top area, the tip of the brush. Continue and come down. One more. One, where you pause. Two, open a little bit, that's enough. Now, three, start pulling the energy from the back. At the same time, let the tip diagonally calm down. So this is the moment you let it go. I know it looks, I mean, it looks it's done very quickly, but it's actually a clear technique. So I show you the three step visually so this is one where I stop one two two is like like a joint between two lines and then three is one one two three like a long boot here. So make sure when you do this technique, your armpit and side of your body and the elbow is open. So you don't have to close this area. And especially when you concentrate, we got very strong tendency of sort of closing the body like this. So always check your upper area shoulder area that they are totally free from the tension. So let's do it again. That's really complex technique and it takes many practice to get lighter feel. One, two, and three. Always three Okay, so normally one practice those each technique a lot more till you get lighter feeling and also you become confident with each brush movement. So today we have to shortcut that. And now I want you to join those elements together. So each technique together to compose this character. I give you some tips. So, and you can really practice with your own pace. 
But normally this process would take two and a half, three hours if one does it really detailed and properly. So no stress. You can really brush up in your free time and you can always practice in my new calligraphy course on Domestica. I'm just giving you like some uh, clear points when you practice calligraphy. So now we put them all together. So fold the paper twice again, check the central area and also middle line. So they are always in the same area as your body line as well. Then you can try to throw as one. And if you haven't got so big brush, you can practice in a smaller scale, let's say four times here on the one sheet or twice on one sheet. I'll show you smaller version. So then if you practice two kanjis on one sheet, just another area, create two central zone, and then just make it a bit smaller and probably a little bit thinner. One, two, and slowly little bit in, come back with your tip, then let it land first, and then one, two, three, and then let it go. And you check, always check the composition line and the balance as well. And Try to combine the breathing with in, middle line, angle in, slowly, no hectic. Holding a big balloon, come back with 45. Check the balance, one, two, three, slowly, little bit in, keep the tip back, check the ground, one, two, two movements at the same time, and let it go. Let's give you the And this is more like a final stage. So you are fine tuning the balance, the wholeness, the dynamics of the lines, and of course, each technique as well. But well, you shortcut that. And you can try, let, let's say, before you finish the process, sit back and maybe try to clear your mind a little bit. So you have practiced the technique. Now you collect your last concentration and put it a little bit higher. Also, I want you to visualize maybe Based on the meaning friend friendship, you could have image of colors, maybe some smell or some faces you imagine. It can be very abstract. So in my method, I want you to put this input in as you do the last piece or two. 
okay? But don't worry if one line goes a bit too short or too thin. It's the, the final stage, so you have to let it go. You don't stop, just stay in the flow and then finish the whole process, okay? So check the middle line. Let me just get more water. How are we doing with the time? <laughs> okay. I want I don't want you to rush. So take your time if you're practicing now. You don't have to do the final pieces. I'm just showing you. So okay, check the balance and angle in side brushing i tell you once again wait till ink comes check 45 in let the brush go come back up one two then go a bit cursive energy up and in, then come back again. Check the ground. One, two, without a twist, and then let it go. And you can check the balance again. If you are happy with the piece, traditionally, you write your name and stamp at the left bottom. For this, maybe, let's say, I just show you the composition. If it's like this, probably more like this area, okay? This is a bit thicker. So this area, you write the name and here. And as a tip, when you do this technique, here, the stage number two, so the second step. Make sure that you don't go twist like this or go this way. When the brush moves in this position, you never have this nice ending. It continues like this. So always, I'll just show you here, one, just on the airy. That's really more than enough. And then let it go. So that's the thickest part, okay? So, And I want you to always remember this energy flow. That's you don't have to practice yourself, but really I want you to remember this, the feeling of lightness and the inner energy movement. So I just show you When you write the name, you can use the smaller brush. I got only big one now. And let's say 
normally the first name should be enough. So if you are maybe I'm there, so I write here like this, that's enough. Or you can make it even thinner. And then here comes the stamp. Okay, that would be ideal. So I want you to practice a bit longer, but today we have to cut the process a little bit shorter. And I hope you get some kind of idea how the shoulder process would look like. And if you are interested, you can always learn and sort of learn deeper with me in my course from springtime. And I guess if you have any question, I don't know, is there questions? So I would try to answer as many as possible. Is it necessary to speak Japanese practice, to, uh, to speak Japanese to practice the technique or can I start learning some words? You don't have to have any Japanese language experience at all. It's basically I would use Japanese words, kat kanjis, hiraganas, to practice, but you don't need any knowledge at all. How do you let the energy fade out? Is it okay to put less pressure on the blush? Is it okay to put less pressure on the blush? How do you let the energy fade out? It's, it's really important that you don't have extra pressure from your body. It has to be totally tension free. And well, it's need a practice, but just to give you a tip, as the brush comes down from the back, you pull the brush up like higher. So the tip only stays, okay? And then as you continue this movement, these two movements meet. And that's the point, let's say here or here. But you have to let it go. And your body has to be really relaxed. I know it sounds very <laughs> complex and it needs a lot of practice, but just try and try to focus on the fine motoric movement. Don't think too much, just pay attention to the detailed sort of each hair movement. And then you will notice as you practice getting lighter and lighter with your movement. How do, you, uh, is there any more? How can I prevent the ink to drop on the paper? Or the table, your work is so clean and clean and pleasure. Well, I would advise clear up your working surface first and also, if you can, cover up. This is like a classic desk pad, a little bit bigger than A4, but I would recommend maybe to get the bigger felt fabric or cover with newspapers. That's also you can do because calligraphy ink, it's the tricky one to get rid of. So make sure that you don't wear like nice white evening dress or any bright shirts because I've seen so many disasters with my students. So if it's possible, darker, more comfortable, sort of top. And also when you do the calligraphy, I'm not sure whether you sit on the chair or on the floor, tight jeans wouldn't be ideal. 
So something really light and comfortable. But it's the messy job. So shall we? Okay. So thank you for watching this video. I mean, not the video. Thank you for watching this stream. And great that you're here. And please, if you're interested, keep up practicing also. And you can always check my new course on Domestica. And you can also check on YouTube and Facebook. OK, thank you very much for your concentration and have a nice, lovely weekend. Arigato. La idea es como algo muy frágil. Se me fue la hebra. I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que los tuyos?